This audio system sucks. This audio system sucks. Yeah, I didn't really like that wireless mic thing that I was trying out last video. I thought it made my voice sound really nasally and tinny. I just didn't like it at all. So I'm not saying that thing's a piece of junk, but you know, I think you just need to play with it a little bit and calibrate it. But for now, we'll just use the phone. So if you guys watched my last video, you saw I replaced our main bearing again, this time the right way, and I used the freezer method, which is pretty badass. If you haven't seen the last video, you should definitely check it out. And we're gonna throw our frozen bearing in there. Holy shit. It's pretty cool, it pretty much blew my mind. I was literally in disbelief. But yeah, so this bottom end is all together, ready to rock and roll. All I gotta do is throw our components on the left and right side cases. So that's what I'm gonna get to doing today. So I have all my parts here organized pretty generally. Not super, you know, organized and all, but I have stuff, you know, boxed according to the size of the engine, cylinder, got the oil tank there, motor mount, stuff like that. Um, I'm pretty familiar with motors and how this came apart, plus I have my videos to refer to, so I should have no problem getting this thing back together. Got the old crank sitting there. Yep. And if you guys remember, I ordered a crankshaft from a company and didn't hear back from them for like ever. And I was starting to think that that part would never ever come. It finally came. It took 34 days. 34 days. I never got an email, never got contacted, never got tra tracking information. And every time I called them, they were telling me, oh yeah, it's coming, it's on its way. And it really wasn't. And it showed up one day, which is amazing. So I do not recommend fat performance parts. Just in my opinion you know it's 34 days is a long time to wait without warning you know they never told me it was on back order or anything like that but nevertheless I'm gonna resell that on eBay let's get back to the build as far as new parts go I have a new clutch here it comes with heavy-duty springs new timing chain and of course gaskets I don't know if we're gonna get to the gaskets today because I'm not sure we're gonna be doing the top end uh, but I think there's a water pump seal in here that we might need and of course our covers the gaskets are in there so first things first I'm gonna get this new clutch kit soaking in oil and get it ready to go in so before we get to oiling these fibers I just want to explain we're gonna be doing a slight modification here and it's what a lot of guys call a full fiber mod and I'm gonna do my best to explain that here so let me get this out of the way and bring our clutch basket in here so basically how this works you have your pressure plate here pull this off and then in here you would have all your clutch discs and your fibers stacked on top of each other and you would pull them all out and then when you get to the end there's actually a wire I have it right here that wraps around your clutch boss and fits into a hole and this retains the last clutch fiber and two washers. There's a spring washer and then another washer, and I actually have them on here. I'm gonna pull our boss out and pull these washers off. You have one. Now this one is a spring washer. I don't know if you can see that. And then one more right here that's flat. And on top of those two washers will be a plate that looks like this. And as you can see here, it looks like a normal clutch fiber, but if you compare it to one of the other seven discs, you can see that it has half of the surface area. So you might be wondering why it's like that. So this is like many other new quads and motorcycles and dirt bikes, I would imagine. This is supposed to allow for smoother clutch engagement so there's a little bit less um, of a harshness when you engage the clutch which can be uh, good for other components in the engine and help them last longer and I guess it's just a a little bit more of a smoother engagement which is you know feels nice but you do sacrifice some performance and some clutching power from the clutch so typically this is like the weakest link weakest um, not the weakest, but it has the least amount of friction of all these plates. So this, this, what typically happens is this plate gets burned out first, and then the rest of your clutch pack is wasted. 
So what a lot of guys do is they scrap this half plate. You get rid of those two washers. You don't need this spring anymore or clip. And then what you do is you get an extra full fiber um, fiber, <laughs> and which I've already done, and you put eight full fibers in like a normal clutch would, and you just forget all that stuff over there. So that's what we're going to be doing. Now for the Banshee, I actually sunk these plates in a tub of oil, but I really don't think that's necessary. So for this time, I'm just going to run some oil around with my fingers on each plate so they can absorb in there. You know, before it was really messy when I actually had them soaking, it was dripping oil all over the place and stuff. I think this is going to be perfectly fine. And for those of you wondering, this is the oil I'm going to be using. It's a Valvoline four-stroke oil, 10 weight 40, just conventional. And I'm sure I'm going to get lit up for this just because it doesn't matter what oil I use. People always have something to say. But this is supposed to be really good for wet clutch protection. So I haven't tried this stuff yet, but I'm going to try it out. And, uh, you know, I read up on it. It's should be good for quads. So let's get to getting some Earl on. I'm going to make sure you're getting both sides of the plates completely covered with oil. And that way it'll all absorb in there and there won't be any dry spots on the first time these clutches bind up. Alright, so let's get going here. I'm going to try using this microphone system for this part. I repositioned it. We'll see if it sounds a little bit better. So what we're going to do first is put our primary drive gear on and our two balancer gears. So these are all indexed. You can see, I don't know if you guys can see this, but there are two little punches on your primary drive gear. And they're going to line up with a punch mark on either side with the balancer gears. And of course, you have your keys. And also, this has a bigger shoulder on the one side for this gear. You want to make sure you put it with the wider shoulder facing towards the crank. And we'll slide our shaft, or keyway, rather, into place. And then we'll put our key in, make sure that it is in. That's all the way in there. Now we'll line up our first balancer gear. You gotta be really patient with these guys because the tolerances are so tight. Sometimes it feels like the gear doesn't even fit on the shaft. You just have to reposition it and gently push and it will go on. And actually I just screwed up. You wanna make sure these two pins or the two um, punches rather are facing upward towards the cylinder. Right now they're on the downward side. It won't work that way. So we're just gonna move this like that. And we'll put our key in. Just spin the shaft while it's in the gear. Line up your keyway. Drop in your key. I'll take the other one for the balancer. Pops right in place, and you can see these two punches are lined up as well as these. All six or four of them need to be lined up at the same time, not one and then the other. And I'll show you how you can make sure you got it lined right up, up correctly. Put our key in. So now just to double check yourself, you can spin the crank, and if you have it in incorrectly, the crank's gonna hit the balancers. So this is correct. You can see it rolls nice and free. Now when you put these washers on, there's a little groove that slides right in the keyway. So you can't really put them on in the wrong uh, orientation.
now we're going to tighten down these three nuts. And how we're going to do that and keep these from spinning is we're going to take these little aluminum nails. You want to use aluminum, that's important because this is a softer metal than the gear. So this will get damaged, the nail will get damaged before the gear would get damaged. Now first we're going to do this one, it's going to be 43 uh, foot-pounds, this is going to be 43 foot-pounds as well. And then this big nut on our crankshaft is going to be 80 foot-pounds. So we're going to be turning clockwise. So I'm going to put our nail right in there. Good. Now that these nuts are tight, we're going to take these little tabs and bend them up. All right, I'm going to go forward here and get some of this stuff together until we get to the clutch. Alright guys, we finally got to put it on the clutch. First thing we're going to do is take our basket. You want to make sure that your oil pump gear and your primary drive gears line up. Then you have this little grooved washer that goes on. Then our clutch boss or inner hub. Now this washer goes in place and if you see it says out on one side. The other side's plain. The side face is out. And then our nut goes on top. Now we're going to put our discs and fibers in, starting with a fiber and finishing with a fiber. One other thing to note is that when putting in these discs, there's typically a rounded edge and a sharp edge. I like to face them either all facing in or all facing out, just as long as they're facing the same way. Now this is not the way you do it according to the service manual, it's just the way that I do it. I will be getting the clutch tool eventually, but for now I hold down the clutch plates and I nap, zap this with the impact gun. But if you were torquing this, it's 68 foot-pounds. And after you're done, it's good to make sure that your clutch boss and your basket are still able to move. It'll be tough to push because there's going to be friction on the plates, but it should still move. Then you're supposed to take this nut, and it's called staking it, just putting a little bit of a dent in the end of the nub, right where one of the cutouts is. That's going to prevent this nut from backing off. Now we're going to put our pressure plate on. 
we'll throw our springs in. Now I'm going to run these in with the impact gun, but you got to be really careful with these. Because you can snap the, the, uh, the studs underneath really easy. I'm going to go out a crisscross pattern here. Now I'm going to torque these down. Manual calls for 5.8 pounds. My torque wrench doesn't go to um, any decimals, so I'm going to go to six foot pounds. That's it, don't go crazy with those. Getting ready to put my clutch cover on here. See, I got it all cleaned up. There was tons of RTV and old gasket material on there and stuff. Got a new gasket. I'm gonna give it a quick shot with some uh, gasket sealant. Just on one side of the gasket, that's the way I like to do it. Usually the one facing the case, or the, uh, the clutch cover, rather. So that if you do pull it off, you don't have to clean the uh, sticky stuff off the cases. Okay guys, I'm going to cap the video there because this is kind of a long and tedious video. I know it's a little bit boring. We got the clutch side complete. Check out the next video to see the statter side getting put together. And then we're going to do the top end as well. So until then guys, enjoy your week. I will see you in the next one. And don't forget to check out my Facebook and Instagram pages. I am going to be changing my Instagram to my name, Michael Sabo. Right now it's ATVCrazy91. But it will be switching over to Michael Sabo. Alright guys, take it easy.